Hey everyone, so uh, let's just uh, see how that uh, performance video was made. So first of all, you'll need Ableton Live. Um, you'll need to download the session uh, that we've supplied for you. And also you'll need this uh, awesome Launch Key Mini. Um, I guess the premise of the performance was to try and make the most out of the Launch Key Mini, showing uh, the pads and the keys being used at the same time. So the thing to bear in mind here is that for the most of what I'm about to talk about, the keyboard is quite separate from the pads. And the keyboard comes in on MIDI channel 1, and the drums come in on MIDI channel 10. So first of all, let's um, take this out of Ableton Session mode, so they're just playing drum notes, and uh, come over to the Ableton Session. So within the Ableton Session, there are eight tracks. Now, um, the first track is called the backing track, and that's literally just a regular audio track, which you can select from um, the Create menu. Um, and what I have done is already put some backing sounds in there, and they sound a bit like this. Okay, so just little extra bits that create builds in the tune that uh, couldn't have been played. Okay, so the next channel is called uh, L key keys channel one, and that means this keyboard here, which is emitting all of its notes on channel one. And also, we need to go up by two octaves to get the right pitch. Okay, so what's actually happening there? We've got the launch key MIDI track, which is just a regular MIDI track. It's receiving from channel one, and also it's in auto, and the record button is armed. Now one thing I've just realized you should double check is by going to um, your preferences, and you should be checking that the launch key mini is actually connected. So let's go here, which is our uh, MIDI page, and you'll see that launch key mini here is actually selected. And also that track on and remote are selected. So once that's set, um, this channel should work. Now, this channel just records all of the notes that are coming in and sends them off to this other green lead track, which actually has the synth in it. Now, in this channel, you want to make sure it receives all the notes from the first channel by selecting L key, keys channel one. It will now receive notes. Make sure that monitor in is active. And let's look through this channel now. There's an arpeggiator, there's an instrument, which is a bass station, plugin from Novation, um, but also if you don't have this installed, I put in another standard synth in the Ableton collection in there so that at least it will work, but highly advise you download the bass station to get the full sound. And at the end there's a chorus just to make it sound fatter. So pretty much that's the whole of the synth setup to play this slide. Okay, pretty straightforward. It gets a little more tricky then when we talk about the pads. So for the pads, and by that I mean these pads here. Um, they're all velocity sensitive and they've got great feel. Um, you can set up a channel to listen in only on channel 10, which is what these send out of by default. Um, select the channel to auto and record arm. And what I've put here is a velocity limiter, which evens out the playing of my performance. Um, and that then feeds into this grouped set of racks here. Now this is a bit tricky, but let's just walk through one at a time. So it's split into two groups, pad A and pad B. And these are defined as pads A are generally bass and pads. And pad B is this group here, which is the drums. Okay. Um, we will use this later, not now. But in pads A, there's an extra pitch device here, which allows us to switch the sounds of the pads and the basses. Anyway, let's move on. We'll come back to that. So this pad section then feeds into these three MIDI channels here called drums, bass, and pads. Now, the drums part takes its MIDI from LK pads channel 10, which is the channel we just talked about, and so does the bass and pads. This basically means that all of these pads are sending to different instruments in Ableton, so we get more control over them. So once those have all been set to receive from this channel here, Make sure monitor in is selected and that they're all um, enabled and not muted so that we can hear them. So let's start with the drums track, which is this pad group here. Now it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you've got a kick, got a snare, a hi-hat, another snare for doing fills, 
And this one over here is a snare and a crash cymbal. Now the reason they're called multis is because you can see that there's actually multiple sounds assigned to that pad. And I did this by dragging in samples and layering them and making sure that they're all on the same note. The reason I've done this is because sometimes one sample by itself doesn't sound great, so you want to fatten it up and add a top kick and a bottom kick and so on. So that's pretty straightforward once they're assigned. Now I actually drag them to the right notes. Uh, so if they were here, they wouldn't work. Okay, so let's move on to the basses now. On the basses channel, it's the same principle of dragging samples onto these pads. Let me just mute the pads so it's easy to hear the bass. And you can see those playing in the drum rack. So the same happens for the pads. And then both together. Okay, so now we can put it all together. Cool. Um, there's one last channel at the end which is called the side chain channel. Now, what this has is a very simple kick drum sound and the MIDI parts for that are in the arrange view and it literally just sends out a pulse that's then received on this really big reverb channel here. Now, um, normally it's set to freeze which gives it this really big sound. It means that the reverb carries on going and gets pumped from this compressor here which is rooted to the side chain that I just talked about, this channel. So let's go through that one more time. This compressor, when side chain is active and side chain is selected, roots this pulse and pumps the compressor. That classic side chain effect. So the last reverb we have is just a rough ambience that gives the whole tune a bit more atmosphere. And on the master channel, the only thing left is a pretty harsh compressor to make sure that it just evens out the sound. So I've pretty much been through the whole setup. Let's just go through the process of recording it in. Now, I've actually left the originals on there for you so that you can hear, but if we were to actually program this in now, We'd set metronome on, go to the start, and hit record, and let's give it a go. Okay. So that shows now that only this channel is recording the synth and only this channel is recording the drum parts. So let's delete these and add the originals back in. There you go. In fact, I need to drag those two more bars over because there's a, a two bar intro. Okay, um, so there is one last thing that I wanted to talk about. There is a B section in the tune, and the B section allows you to reroute these pads to different sounds. The way that's done was earlier we talked about the LK pads section as having this pad A and pad B special section. Now in pads A, what I've actually added is a pitch shifter here, and by using MIDI Learn, I've assigned this pad to enable or disable an eight note pitch shift. Now, why is that important, you say? Well, if we go back to these bass notes now, we realize that by pressing this button, it shifts these up by eight. Okay, so that allows for a B section in the tune. Cool, so that was how the B section happens, using this button to effectively move all of these notes up by eight to play different samples. Uh, cool, so um, that's pretty much the, the whole session. You can download it, try it out for yourself, um, basically have fun with it, repost it, do whatever you want, have fun. <laughs>